All right, welcome to another People Behind the Science for the Microbiology of the Built Environment program funded by the Alfred P. Sloan Foundation. So here we're here with Greg Caparezzo from Northern Arizona. Yep, you got that right. All right, and he is a new Sloan grantee. So we'll start off with asking how did you become interested in microbiology of the built environment? Right, um, yeah, so I, I first became interested in studying the built environment because I think um, Relative some, to some of the other environments I've worked in, it's uh, uh, it's relatively stable. So um, you know, it's it's uh, and it, and it's very easily accessible. So um, you know, we can work on studies in our own offices or in our own homes. Um, we don't necessarily be, need to be going out to the field to do things um, like collecting long time series data. So it's uh, it's easier to get started, and I think there's also a lot of uh, really important questions. Um, so. Um, specifically the types of things I'm interested in is how are communities that establish in the built environment affecting human health um, and ultimately can we make predictions about whether a, a community is going to establish that affects human health or maybe accelerates the rate of building degradation. Yeah, no, that sampling issue is a big issue. So for marine biology, it costs about $25,000 a day to run a ship, and you have uh -huh. to go out for like six weeks at a time to kind of ask the same questions. So yeah, the fact that it's right here is really a plus. Uh -huh. So can you tell me a little about, bit about the new project you just got funded through this one? Sure. Um, so this is a study to look at, um, at microbial succession in the built environment. Um, so at this point, um, like I just mentioned, we know that, uh, that uh, communities that establish indoors can affect things like human health and build rates of degradation, um, but we don't have a good idea about what different factors are, uh, are contributing to um, what communities are establishing indoors. Um, and so in this study, what we'll be doing is looking at the effect of surface material, uh, climate, and then various other um, environmental uh, met, uh, uh, environmental metadata, environmental parameters um, that are affecting the uh, succession of microbial communities. So the idea is that we'll start in uh, three different cities. So we're going to work in Flagstaff, Arizona, which is where I am, um, San Diego, and Toronto. Um, and what we'll do is we'll identify three different offices um, in three different buildings in each of these cities and we'll install in each of these offices uh, three different surface materials and so we'll install carpet tile, ceiling tile, um, and fiberboard, so kind of your classic IKEA desk uh, surface material. Um, and we will make some attempts to clean these materials in the beginning in the same way, so make an attempt at sterilizing them, but really get them, get them to the point where um, they're all coming from the same starting condition. Um, install these and then monitor them over the course of about a year. Um, so in uh, four six weeks, uh, six week blocks over the period of a year, we'll do uh, regular sampling. So somewhere in the order of about two days to eight days, mm -hmm. um, we'll collect the sample from each of these surfaces. Um, and at the same time, we'll be collecting um, environmental metadata, so outdoor environmental metadata, so things like temperature, relative humidity, um, indoor environmental metadata, so uh, things like room temperature, um, light, uh, uh, light intensity, um, and things like um, activity in the room using the motion, motion sensors. Um, and then we'll also be looking at some microenvironmental um, parameters, um, so things like water activity and the um, uh, and uh, proximity uh, to uh, proximity of objects or people to these materials. Right, right. Um, so we'll do that by installing motion sensors on uh, with each of these materials that have a very small range on them, so they're only detecting things that are uh, very close. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, we'll uh, over the period of a year we'll have uh, four of these six week sampling periods. Um, and at, at the end, we'll then be able to look at um, what, which of these factors were, set, were affecting what communities are establishing over time. Mm -hmm. uh, additionally, um, whether climate seems to play a role. So are materials um, that were installed in the same city more similar to each other in their succession patterns than materials that were installed in different cities. Right, cool. And you're doing some cool bioinformatic comparisons as well with stuff sampling the communities after, right? Um, right, yeah, so one of the one of the big questions here, so um, uh, we're at the point right now where um, these, these studies are getting a lot more accessible. So the cost of sequencing is going down um, and the bioinformatics techniques are, are becoming a lot more advanced, becoming a lot more accessible. Um, and with the introduction of things like uh, easily accessible cloud computing, um, even the cloud computing, or even the computing resources are getting uh, pretty accessible. Right. 
Um, and so um, we're moving to a really exciting period, I think, where we'll be able to start doing things like routine monitoring of buildings um, for uh, uh, to uh, develop things like early warning systems of communities that might have a negative impact on human health or on uh, building health or uh, whatever. Um, and so one of the key questions there is um, how often do we need to be sampling to detect um, what might be, um, you know, uh, shifts in the community towards something, uh, toward, uh, toward an unhealthy community state. Um, and so what we'll do is in our first six week sampling period, we're going to collect very dense uh, time series data. So we're going to sample every two days um, from, uh, from nine different sites in each office um, and then uh, from the nine different offices included in this study. Um, and what we'll then be able to do with that information, we'll sequence that right away. So we're going to be doing the sequencing on the Illumina, high se uh, on the Illumina MySeq, which is um, the benchtop sequencer mm -hmm. from Illumina. Um, and so we'll sequence all these samples right away. And what we'll do, one of the main goals in this study is to determine if we can develop um, predictive models. So can we make predictions about, say, the abundance um, just for simplicity of like one specific taxa based on environmental data or other taxa that are present in that environment? Um, and so what we can do is we can develop, uh, develop our model using all of the data, the, the dense time series data, and then we can subsample from that. So rather than using data from every two days, um, we can use data from every four days or every six days and see what, uh, what effect that has on our ability to develop predictive models. Yeah. And using that, we can then figure out um, the right balance of um, accuracy of our methodology um, and our models um, versus cost of sequencing. So right. obviously to do uh, two day time series, uh, every two day time series is, is more expensive than to do it every four days. Right. Um, so if doing it every two days doesn't buy us a lot in terms of accuracy, then we know for example that maybe it's okay to go with sampling every four days. Yeah, yeah, and these computational comparisons are a huge part. I mean, almost as important as the, the sampling design. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it'll definitely be interesting to see, so. Uh -huh. Yeah, so and then we'll actually, so we'll use that information from our first, uh, our first uh, sampling period to inform our sampling frequency yeah. in the remaining sampling yeah. periods, which I think is um, another really uh, exciting aspect of this study and what we're able to do now with these sequencing technologies. Yeah, and, and it's great because all these approaches in the built environment are equally, uh, I mean, there are questions in all studies like marine environments or soil ecosystems, so just because it's on built environment doesn't mean it has a wider appeal. Right. So that's awesome. Mm -hmm. So you kind of answered this, but just to finish up, what's one big scientific question right now, in your opinion, in the built environment research community? Um, well, I think, you know, uh, the big one that I'm thinking about is the one that's driving this project. So um, what, what factors are contributing to communities, uh, to the establishment of communities in the built environment? Um, so is it things like outdoor temperature, um, indoor, uh, you know, light availability and so on? Um, or do none of those things matter, and the only thing that matters is the cleaning schedule in the building, right. and so on. Um, and so I think um, that's one of the big questions in my mind, is um, what factors are affecting what communities are establishing. Yeah, no, it's interesting. So awesome. Well, thank you very much for joining us, yep, and thank you. stay tuned for more in our series.